Well, we'll welcome uh, you all to the uh, March meeting of the Design Review Board here in Aiken. We appreciate your participation in the process in which we uh, uh, try to uh, assist property owners with uh, any uh, modifications that they might be making to uh, their property in uh, our overlay districts. Um, and um, we'll, we'll uh, while, while I'm speaking, our board will be reviewing minutes uh, for the last uh, month's meetings. And once we uh, vote on those, we'll be reading the applications and um, our secretary will do that. And then you'll be able to come to the uh, lectern in the center and give your name and address. So once again, we uh, thank you for uh, your attendance tonight and we'll uh, move forward just as soon as we get our minutes approved. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that uh, we approve the minutes from the February 6th meeting, uh, the executive meeting session, uh, the work session, and the regular okay. meeting minutes. I second that motion. Okay, that motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have, I'm going to uh, abstain because I was not here for that meeting. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, have a motion and a second for the February meetings. All those uh, in favor of, uh, of approving the minutes, raise your right hand. Okay. And we have one abstention. Okay, now, uh, Madam Secretary, if you would please uh, begin by reading our uh, first item of new business. Item A under new business, application number CERH24-031. Applicant Lauren Virgo is requesting approval to replace the retention wall for the William Gregg Buttery Root Cellar at 433 Newbury Street Southwest. Tax map parcel 105-12-02-001. The existing 60 to 70 inch wide by 40 inch tall wall on either side of the buttery were constructed in 2012 with rebar and railroad ties, but they are now collapsing. This is resulting in a potential safety issue for visitors. The applicant is proposing to replace the existing wall with a brick retention wall that will have gray stone and mortar facing. The stone choice is meant to complement the historic stones that were used to construct the buttery. Each proposed new wall will have dimensions of 60 inches wide by 36 inches height and will not be curved. The foundation will require concrete footings that will be poured using an eight inch concrete block for a backer for the stone veneer and caps. The stone mason who moved the historic buttery in 2012 will conduct the work. This is a landmark property located in the historic overlay district, specifically historic district two, <laughs> and is zoned RSS single family stable. The construction date is listed on the Aiken Historic Resource Survey card as circa 1932. Okay, if, if uh, someone would come forward and uh, to represent uh, the museum and give your, uh, <coughs> give your name and address, we appreciate it. Good evening. I'm Mary Rossback. I'm the Operations and Education Manager at the Aiken County Historical Museum, and my address is 1002 Hammond Road. Okay, thank you. Your phot photographs are very uh, helpful, and I'm not sure everybody's familiar with the fact that you've got William Gregg's, we used to call Springhouse, uh, <laughs> there on the Banksia grounds. Um, the spring house is holding up, but the retaining walls aren't, it looks like. Yes, sir. And, and the railroad ties were sort of a temporary fix, I believe, to, to hold the earth back. I believe everybody understands the, the need for what you're doing. Any questions? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, question. So you're using the same person to do this work as did the original work. Mm -hmm. Did we determine why the original work failed? We did not. Well, I just, just to keep it from reoccurring, you know, to make sure that it uh, was done properly this time mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. the integrity stays longer than 11 years, so. I think we've got a, an, an expert on retaining walls coming forward to speak. <clears throat> I apologize, my name is Lauren Virgo and I live at 905 Wheeler Drive Southwest 
Sorry, y'all, my eye has decided to swell shut. So it has given me a little bit of a fight this morning, or this afternoon. Um, from what we can tell from the original, the original design with the stonemason was to put a stone wall if that was complimentary. Um, mm -hmm. At the time of moving, I believe it was budget that restricted that because it had cost us $40,000 to move it from the William Gregg site and have it reinstalled historically to historic accurate, historically accurate as we could get it on the Banksia side. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, the rebar is staked into the ground um, and the railroad ties are a singular wall going straight up. So what I think with time has happened is the rebar has started to bend with the weight of the railroad ties. Mm -hmm. And as that has happened, they've just allowed the collapse to slowly um, ensue. There is still one good wall, sort of if you're looking at the buttery on the right, but it's only a matter of time before those railroad ties also start to shift and also start to fail with the rebar. Um, Mr. Bossy said that he had wanted originally to put the stone wall up because he knew it would become an issue with the railroad ties. I just think at the time the museum probably didn't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. And as we said in the work session, even, <coughs> even block walls can fail, can be pushed over by water pressure. So oh, yes, typically, sir. you know, you have some weep holes and, and even gravel uh, Right, uh, by a drain drain bed behind it, so the water can go through. I agree, um, and it's one of those things that on um, the back side of Banksia, facing south boundary, we've had issues with water intrusion, and we've had to install French drainage systems because that is such an area that directly drains, as you know, into the Hitchcock Woods area, which has also had drainage issues. Okay. Um, so that is something that we are very aware of that that's going <coughs> to be part of the new repair. Good. And we talked about putting a bend in it too. Or yes, sir. I agree. The, it was the stonemason who recommended a straightforward wall, but I disagree. I think that it needs a curve to it, especially given the hillside, and also maybe a taper starting at three feet tall at the at nearest the buttery, and then tapering down to say a one and a half foot or two foot wall towards yeah. the end with the curve. And some concrete mm -hmm. footings in there too. Yes, and concrete yeah. footings. Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. Good. Good. I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, we'll see if anyone else would like to speak uh, with regard to the, actually it's a, it's a retaining wall, it's not part of the original spring house, but it, it has to be there to hold back the, the earth. Uh, it's an obvious uh, need that uh, should have probably fixed, been fixed before now. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll have a motion then if you'd like. Yeah, I think we didn't do that. Okay, anybody? I believe I did ask. Yeah, uh, but we'll see if anyone would like to speak. Go ahead. To would anybody else like to speak? Oh, I think I asked, and I don't believe anybody was. Coming. That's okay. <clears throat> I know it's um, difficult to get a, a detail drawn. You were saying, maybe we could specify that. The stone veneer has to be at least four inches thick, and it needs to be tied into the back wall, and it needs yeah. to have a foundation. I think you can make that motion that it's part of that. It, it, it's real stone, for one thing. It's not glue on, but it, it does have a block wall behind it, which is helpful, but it also needs weep holes. So those are some things we could put in. No, I, I agree. I think <coughs> that um, <coughs> if, if the builder, Mr. Chairman, would give us a detail as to step-by-step step how he's going to construct it. And, uh, Even just written would, up, you mean? Just written up. Yeah, I think I that's think that the would problem. give us a, <clears throat> well, mm. a good insight that we could <clears throat> double-check and our department can mm -hmm. go out and re-inspect. So. Well, and, and another thing I've noted in the application is it's pretty specific. Uh, each wall <coughs> will have a 60-inch width and a 36-inch height. Uh, and will not be curved. It seems like that um, when I'm working in situations like this, you know, I would rather have a little flexibility rather than saying it's exactly this many inches. Mm -hmm. It seems like it would be um, kind of play, work it into what works right and taper it off kind of like what you talked about. So maybe we could, in the motion, um, make give them some flexibility to right. kind of do it the right way. Okay. Yeah, using the word approximate. <clears throat> okay. Well, you someone could uh, maybe word that that would help. Uh, I I think maybe he could he could uh, have a a narrative, so to speak, of what of this of what he's going to be including mm -hmm. in the work. If he can't do a drawing, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion, Chair. Mm -hmm. 
I move that for application CERH 24-031 um, for 433 Newberry Street Southwest that the um, proposed uh, stone wall um, for the buttery be constructed with um, eight inch concrete block as specified in the description but also with at least four inches of stone veneer, a stone cap, which is also at least four inches. Um, none of the concrete blocks should be uh, seen in the final product. And um, there should be ties back into the block and there should be a drainage system and footing for the proposed. Mm -hmm. um, and that the dimensions that are currently described as 60 inches uh, wide by 36 inches high be um, approximated. Okay, okay, good. I have a motion, a second? I second the motion. Okay, thank you. Um, any other, I know we've talked about it, it, it mentioned straight, and we've talked about it, it, it possibly could have some curve or angle. I think his problem is he's got block work back there and he's trying to how to do that but it will help it stabilize it so I think we don't have to r r uh, make, make that be a specific request that it be straight let's we go in that would that be accurate then unless you want it straight <laughs> right okay well she didn't mention that it was straight wall but the application does so it will not be curved yeah it's specified <clears throat> to not be curved Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's necessary. Um, you can leave straight if you want. But. Yeah. Okay. And it should also have uh, rebar. We didn't mention that. It should have reinforcing in the block mm -hmm. and grouted, fully grouted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Then we I second second the uh, okay. grouting and rebar. All right. Any other, any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, uh, raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's approved. Mm -hmm. Item B under new business, application number CERH24 033, applicant Thomas Revenel is requesting approval to replace the entrance gates and paint four wall columns at 836 Whiskey Road, tap smack parcel 121-13-13-002. The previously existing gate, located at the corner of Whiskey Road and Knox Avenue, was damaged and therefore has already been removed. The proposed new gates will be designed to match the original gate and remaining stationary side gates, with the addition of the owner's initial TR in the middle of each gate. It will have a height of 89 inches. The letters TR will have dimensions of 23.88 inches wide by 36 inches in height and will be painted gold. Additionally, the applicant is proposing to paint the four columns located at this corner. The applicant is proposing to paint the, co the columns Sherwin-Williams flat black and the concrete finial balls gold. The proposed gold paint is Nova number 185 Sun Gold Acrylic Paint. The two columns closest to the proposed new gate are proposed to have iron collars added around the necks of the finial balls. The four inch collars will have a design of small leaves that will match the decorative leaves on the original gates. This is a contributing property located in the Historic Overlay District, specifically Historic District 1, and is zoned RSS Single Family Stable. The construction date is listed on the Aiken Historic Resource Survey Card as 1930. The Aiken County Assessor's website lists the construction date as 1909. Comments provided by the Historic Aiken Foundation have been added as Exhibit I and are available outside of council chambers. Okay, do we have somebody representing the applicant tonight? Please. Mm -hmm. Good evening, I'm uh, Deidre Politelli and I'm representing Thomas Ravenel. I'm the house manager on the property. And um, I have brought 
Don Butler, who built the original gate and who will be replacing the gate. Good. Um, um, good evening. Good. Thank you for coming. I'm Donald Butler. I'm the owner of Aiken Owner Mill Iron Works. I've done work here around the city of Aiken and well, Aiken County for the last 31 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, those gates there, I was the original designer of those gates from Mr. Lewis Pincone. Uh, when he moved here from New Jersey and purchased that property. And so I was uh, was a little disappointed to see somebody ran into him, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of bittersweet. So, uh, and I've been asked to redesign the gates. Well, not, well, back to the original design. And that's your work right there. You're saying even on the side, the stationary portion as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What year did you uh, install that original gate? What year? Yeah, about approximately. <clears throat> well, I can. I, I hadn't done the math, but I know it's been at least twenty some years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can can the letters be removed if somebody if he moved and somebody else bought the house? Can the can you make the letters removable? Or are they going to be integral with the, the metal gate? Those designs you saw, mm -hmm. those the T the the, uh, the TR. Yes, the TR. Oh, the, the alphabets. You said will they be able to be removed? Yeah. With a little <clears throat> a little effort, we would the way I would put them in, I'd build like a frame, and at some point, wherever they touch it, that's where I would put a little well to hold them in place. And if it had to be removed, it wouldn't take much just to someone with a grinder. And then grind it, grind it back off. Right. Because otherwise it would be, if, if somebody bought it in the future, they're going to have somebody else's initials on the gate, obviously. Um, any other questions? Uh, the first set of gates were, were really nice. And when I were, was growing up here, they were just old wooden gates, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's probably what was there when you, you, you came in and took it down and put these in, maybe the old wooden gates. Right, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You couldn't see in. So, I, I mean, that, that would be something <clears throat> you could go back to. And actually, if you were just going to replace the, uh, the gate that was damaged and repair it, you wouldn't even have to come to our meeting. <laughs> but I think the changes are what's bringing you our meeting so we'd have to vote on the changes uh, including painting the columns um, do y'all have any other questions uh, um, could you comment about the uh, the gold paint tell me what your thought was there seems kind of strong uh, well we can we can bring the Right. Kind of tie it together. Would really. Mm -hmm. The black would go on the two uh, gate columns, Correct. but not on the. To the right, you've got uh, uh, other columns that go on. They're attached to the to the wall. Correct. Um, upper so right. The, the, that's so they're painted black, but then the wall would be separated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So all four columns will be black, mm -hmm. not just the two around the gate. Right, the four columns. The four columns. Mm -hmm. And then I would assume that the balls <coughs> on top of all the columns would be painted gold. Just, just, uh, it's just the two. By the by, the operating yeah, gate. So it's the two pieces of gold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now so the the application sort of has it the other way around, but. I, uh, yeah. So I'm looking at Exhibit A, <clears throat> and it clearly reads page the two. Three. Yeah, page three, Exhibit two A. Two columns by the main gate will be painted black. 
But then the four so concrete. The four, the four concrete balls on top of the column. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the balls closest to the big wall will have an iron column adorned. So, okay, I'm mistaken. So it is uh, no, the four but, balls that will be painted gold, and the two closest to the gate will have these hollows. Okay. Um, around it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it would be important if, if you were able to remove the letter, if we vote on approving the letters, I think it would be important that they be easily removed in the future um, if, if he feel, feels the need to have his initials on there. And we trust your ability to perform the work. You've done good work around town, and the, certainly the gates you're replacing were attractive and appropriate. <coughs> Any other questions, go <coughs> folks? <coughs> thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. We'll see if any other folks here would like to speak. We, we did have some comments from uh, the historic Aiken um, um, about the, whether the need <coughs> to change uh, what what were uh, original columns in, in a stucco finish. Um, and um, I think our guidelines talk about repairs should re retain the historical character uh, of, of a structure. And so we need to ask ourselves if, do, you know, having new black columns, is that, is that retaining the character? Um, so I think the historic uh, Aiken folks were not real in, a, in agreement with, with the change um, in color. We certainly need, you need to replace and repair the gate. I think the, the uh, lettering, you could, you could probably make the point that, well, this is something that can be changed later. We'll just have to vote and see how the motion goes. Any uh, any other um, comments from? Sure, Mr. Rinaldini. If you give your name, please. We know who you are, but the, for the record, thank you. Hi, uh, it's Louis Rinaldini uh, uh, from 638 Magnolia Street, and I am representing the Historic Aiken Foundation tonight because Linda Johnson's not a, in town. Uh, so I think one of the things that uh, we would like to clarify is uh, it sounds like the gates are going to be replaced with the same exact design and exact materials as the original, but there's always room for that to not be exact unless it's specified. So we, if, if that is the case, maybe we can clarify it and, and, and specify it. Um, and I think, you know, the, the uh, as you correctly pointed out, we don't have any objection to the replacement of the gates, and in fact, we applaud it. Uh, but uh, you know, there is a concern about you know the size of the initial letters and the gilding and the painting black, which appears to be uh, you know more um, called more attention to itself than most of the gates in the area. Uh, and that's just a concern about fitting into and not diminishing the character of the historic district overall. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could I ask you a question, Mr. Raldini? So uh, I thank you for getting up and speaking. Um, the uh, Since the gates are going to be black, you know, and they're see-through pretty much, do you think that it's a safety issue something that stands out with the gold color to help you recognize not to drive through it like it's already been damaged or what's your opinion on that um, I I not sure I would be able to opine on whether you know black uh, columns would be more or less visible than for example white columns mm -hmm. uh, and my guess is that 
you know, a normal person driving would see columns and a gate, uh, and whoever run into them was either not in a normal state of mind or not paying attention, uh, rather than failed to see it. It, mm -hmm. it just seems to me, you know, the gate, you know, these kind of gates, if they're, you know, if they match the side pieces, are pretty visible, mm -hmm. even as they are. In their, in so their, I was their, really referring to the gold letters to kind of help make the gates visible, you know, for safety reasons. You, you feel like that's just not necessary, or I, 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 I would have to agree that it would make it more visible. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that would fall into the category of necessary or helpful in my mind. I mean, I think the gate would be visible with or without. Mm -hmm. The gold. I got you. Thank that you. That might for be a public safety question rather than historic. Right. <laughs> it uh, might be safer, but it doesn't fit in. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think you know, if you if you you know, if you we did an informal survey of other gates in Aiken and in, in the historic district in particular, and there's you know, there's not a there's not really an argument for gilding. I mean, gilding. Wrought iron sometimes is common in certain communities, but mm -hmm. doesn't appear to be in this community and in this district. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You know, uh, uh, ironically, if you if you're concerned about people running into it, uh, we 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 do uh, um, mesh steel mesh fencing in black, so it disappears. Right. Right. Um, so we typically don't think of going dark to make it stand out. Uh, not that may not have been a, the it, intention. I guess if there was some, uh, did somebody mention something about a smaller, smaller letters uh, uh, or size letters? Would you like to come forward and give your name, yeah. please? <laughs> My name is uh, Lucy Knowles, 504 Berry Road in Aiken, and um, this is your book. And the standard is is what is proposed harmonious with the architectural aesthetic character of the historic district. And um, I would uh, suggest that this is not harmonious with the historic district in which it's found. Mm -hmm. There are no other examples of gilded gates, as um, Mr. Ronaldini said, and uh, no other examples of um, gate posts like this painted black. Usually they're brick and white or they're the same color as the wall mm -hmm. and they're not distinct like this proposes to be. And Mr. Chair, also I propose that this is kind of a commercial application in what is a residential um, project, you know, a residential place. And That's the design style, you mean the yes. black and the gold and so on, and the big lettering and the lettering, mm -hmm. yeah, and maybe that also contributes to it not fitting in. I guess if I were going to do letters, if 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 you know, there might be a way to do them uh, mm -hmm. over in the corner, you know, um, but these are uh, fairly sizable. Thank you for your comments, though. Um, we better go ahead then, and if you all are willing, I uh, don't see any other folks who want to speak. Yes, sir. 23, 24, about 30. Mm. Wouldn't it be more um, appropriate to have uh, the columns white and the all the metal work black, um, and um, the balls can be any color they want, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, you probably feel strongly about that. Or, or not, but um, wouldn't, uh, from a safety point of view and every other point of view, the uh, the whole area there, the gates and the two side portions, uh, they they'd be livelier with the white in the the vertical white stripes. They'd be easier to see, and they'd be uh, pro perhaps easier not to run into. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, for no, the record. Martin, yes. you, you didn't, we know that this is Martin Buckley. <laughs> yeah, noted Aiken architect Martin Buckley. That's right. <laughs> okay. 
and lives on Barry Road, I believe. Barry Road, yeah. yeah. Did you want to come forward? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing I didn't tell you that I was a public safety officer here in Aiken for 31 years. Mm -hmm. In my whole 31 years, that wall on at Round Point there was only hit one time out of my 30-year career. Yeah. So the point I'm making, it doesn't matter what color you paint things. If someone is intoxicated or not paying attention, it doesn't matter what color. You got flashing <laughs> lights up there, they still ran into it. So to say that painting those columns black or the gate black and whatever, it's, it's going to be a safety issue. Don't forget the I, cell phone. I believe people... I believe there's more of a history of people hitting that this gate than the than the Ron Punt wall, isn't there? Say again, I, sir. I believe there's a history of more people running into this gate back when it was wooden gates even than Ron Punt. Ron Punt's one we've been everybody hits now for some right. reason. Nobody hit it when we were growing up. That one though has had some accidents, isn't that right? It was hit one time since yeah. I've since the design hit, didn't, didn't actually hit the gate, it hit that pine tree that's, if you put the picture there, you can see the skint marks still on that pine. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, so it damaged that one little section there, but it didn't, I think it was just someone was being unattentive and just swerved over and hit the, um, hit the tree there. Right, right. Um, Is anybody interested in having, uh, seeing if they would consider smaller letters? These are two foot by foot. Three foot, I believe. Is that right? Two foot the yeah, letters. letters. That's you talking about the alphabets that's gonna be in the gate? Yes, sir. They will be approximately uh twenty nine inches uh wide. It'll be like a and the reason we when we were designing those, uh we wanted to make it in a proportion of the gate. We didn't want a a tall letter that's 36, 48 inches, then it's, it's taking up the whole section of the gate. So we had it in mind designing it so it would be equal to the size of each gate, you know. Mm -hmm. So it would be just as much at the top, it would be at the bottom. <clears throat> yeah. So when somebody runs into it, you want that to be their last memory. The, <laughs> the, the TR. <laughs> That's a big ladder, though. I mean, uh, yeah. three feet is a tall ladder. Uh, I just want to let you know that this is the second time, obviously, as he's saying, of a person running into the gate, uh, like, within a year. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I, I can just mention is um, I am absolutely sure that Mr. Ravenel would never paint the columns white. Never paint them white? White. He would never paint them. Yeah, I think we're... They're they're off white now, are they not? Sort of stucco, gray. Well, it's an old, yeah. I mean, the walls obviously are a little more than more gray. I don't think we're we're proposing that they be painted white, but uh, that I think that y'all are suggesting black. Uh, so I guess we'll just need to vote on that. So um, since we're talking about safety, I think I brought it up. As a matter of fact, yeah. the uh, throw the photo back up with the gate, um, that one there. So I'm, I'm trying to envision those columns black and, and a metal gate closed. And it kind of seems like everything blends into the background except for the wall to me mm -hmm. when, you, when you paint those columns black. Right. You know, and so I'm not sure that uh, there's enough contrast there from, mm -hmm. from my perspective. Mm-hmm. Not saying it has to be white. I'm just saying contrast-wise. Yeah. And I guess I'm, I'm, we're trying to think of any painted columns at, at, around Aiken. The, this is a people. flat black. This is not going to be a high shiny. Mm -hmm. just, but you. But we don't. We, we we're not recalling any any masonry that's black at a g gate mm -hmm. right now. <clears throat> You, you don't know of any? No, I live in Charleston. I know a lot about the Charleston Gates, but. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, we'll, we can uh, entertain a motion.
Thank you. So my one would, would be willing to make a motion uh, or, yeah. And make, um, just as a reminder, from our design review manual, it says, uh, walls, fences, and gates are among Aiken's most character-defining features mm -hmm. and include enclosures, a variety of materials, blah, blah, blah. Aiken's enclosures are an extremely important historic element of the city. Mm -hmm. and for that reason, should be preserved and protected. So. Right. Yeah, we're, we're known for our walls and I guess gates as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you, are you going to make a motion? Is someone making a motion here? That uh, we've also got a section showing examples of um, a number of gates, and some of them are sandstone. Uh, I see some dark wood gates. Um, and then page 36, walls and fences, I think you're talking about. Okay, who would like to make a motion? Um, I would like to make a motion then uh, for certificate application CERH 24-033 for 836 Whiskey Road that the um, gates that are uh, have been um, articulated in the application as having the owner's initials in the middle of each gate but that the new gates will be designed to match the original gate um, not be approved for the initials and the painting of the columns not be approved, but the, um, the new gates uh, to match the original gate would be approved. Okay. And so the, wall, the two columns would be left as is or clean, but not painted black. And then the ball, the top finial ball thing was proposed gold. Is that something we want to approve or I would also say no the, um, okay. because it's not something that was done previously and it's yeah. not in mm -hmm. keeping with yeah. um, kind of Aiken's context okay. I second okay any other discussion um, we'll have a vote but I think it's fairly unanimous that that'd be a, a, a pretty drastic change to this historic property and in a way, could would even kind of over overpower the actual house that's back there um, that uh, certainly has history attached to it. So we don't want our surrounding walls to to be more prominent than than the homes. Uh, but we do commend you all for getting a good uh, iron uh, work uh, uh, artist and. Uh, those were certainly attractive gates that were damaged and we hope they can be repaired pretty much as as they were before does that mm -hmm. capture your motion okay all in favor of the uh, motion to, to not approve these changes but to allow the repairs uh, to uh, essentially to replace what was there raise your right hand okay all right good thank you <clears throat> I think our, la our last uh, uh, motion is it to do with the windows, I believe. Windows on Trafalgar. Yeah. Item C under new business, application number CERH24 035. Applicant Jocelyn Bryant, represented by Benjamin Broom, is requesting approval to replace four windows on the left facade of 211 Trafalgar Street Southwest. Tax map parcel 105-07-05-005. Three windows in the guest bedroom and one window in the guest bathroom are proposed to be replaced. The applicants are proposing replacement windows because the existing windows are old and the applicants want to have more energy efficient windows. The existing windows are three over one double hung white wood with metal storm windows attached. They have true divided lights. The proposed <coughs> replacement windows are one over one double hung white Fibrex windows. Fibrex is a composite blend of 40% wood fiber and 60% thermoplastic polymer. 
This is a contributing property located in the Historic Overlay District, specifically Historic District 3, and is zoned RS-15 single family. The construction date is listed on the Aiken Historic Resource Survey Card as circa 1930. The Aiken County Assessor's website lists the construction date as 1939. The Historic Resource Survey Card, which was recorded in 2010, states under significant architectural features that several original three over one windows were still existing at that time. There are no certificate of appropriateness records to indicate that these windows have been replaced since then. Comments from the Historic Aiken Foundation and additional property photos have been provided in exhibits H and I. These exhibits are available outside of council chambers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And if you all could give your name and address for the record, appreciate it. My name is Garrett Smith. I live on 211 Trafalgar Southwest. Okay, okay. Um, and we, we saw the condition of the windows and you mentioned the fact that they're not operable any longer and there may even be some uh, moisture damage at the sill to the, to the structure yes. of the house. Not sure till you open that up. Um, we also talked about the, uh, <clears throat> maybe the fact that these particular storm sash that are, are no longer effective in terms of protecting the house and they, they really don't, they, they actually detract, I think, from those very uh, attractive craftsman windows. Um, and as we, we, if you look in this reference book, Field Guide to American Houses, it actually gives the, the picture for the craftsman house has your three over one windows in it as one of the uh, characteristics of a craftsman bungalow um, it, it, it came about in that that era and uh, probably not much later than the 30s um, but um, that's something that w is actually um, identifying your cottage as craftsman uh, style so I think that'd be pretty important um, as we said in our meeting um, and this particular company can uh, as I understand it, they can manufacture a window that has a simulated grid to uh, to match what's there now. I think we most of the time we we want to uh, replicate if you are going to replace a window, and we certainly don't want you replacing with vinyl windows either. <laughs> uh, so this is a wood product, um, <clears throat> but I believe that the the appearance of it. Is pretty important because of the distinctiveness of of your uh, mutton arrangement. Um, that's my thoughts. And then if we have, uh, I, I, I believe we confirm that your uh, window manufacturer can can make the type window that we call simulated divided light. Um, so. Do y'all have other comments? I guess uh, I'd have a question for mm -hmm. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, do you have a problem uh, changing out the grid line, the grid to the uh, to the three over one? If that's what we recommend, do you have an issue with that? He was asking if you if you're okay with putting the the, the sash in the the, the, the grills the grills on the top sash on there. You don't have them on the bottom sash. Oh, I. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. Yeah, you, you're going to get more bang for the buck. I mean, when you take the storm sash off, it would be a shame to then just have plain glass <laughs> when you've got a, such an attractive window. You can't really make the windows out very well with the storm sash. So I think you'll get more for your money if you can do the simulated vinyl light. Right. Yeah. There's one thing that's not exactly right. In that uh, the house itself was actually built in uh, the 1890s. Was it really? In Warrenville. So it's moved. And then when the uh, <laughs> when the uh, hotel burned the second time, they started selling off. Uh, then it was moved to its present location. So you you you're from you've uh, how long have you lived in the house? Uh, 43 years. Okay. So you knew a little bit of the history of how it got there. Yes. 
I don't, I don't know if the, we knew that. Move from Warrenville, did you say? Okay. And what year that was? Uh, it, it was around 1920. It's, it's, it was yeah. right after uh, the hotel started selling the land. That 20s, based. yeah. You don't know if it was a Sears and Roebuck house by any chance. It has... I have no idea. Yeah, it has <laughs> wide overhangs and brackets and all. I mean, it might actually be... Maybe. You could order houses from Sears back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, thank you for yeah coming in and 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 uh, submitting the application and getting a good window. I think you'll get. It's an expensive thing I know to do this, but I think you'll get more for your money if and uh, it'll be really attractive to take the storm sash off. Yeah. Can I? Can yeah. I ask? Go ahead. Can I ask a question of, of the representative from Anderson? Yes, sir. How is this affiliated with Anderson? Is is this just a division of Anderson? This, is this the installation division of Anderson, or how does uh, that work? Uh, my name is Ben Broom. Um, um, do I need to give my address? Do I need to give my address? Uh, 2314 Maple Drive, North Augusta, South Carolina. Okay. North Augusta, okay. Yes, sir. So, Renewal is Anderson's custom division. Um, our window product is not sold in stores. Um, you have to have a representative come to your house and um, it's just a specialty Anderson product. Anderson is our parent company. Our windows are manufactured in the Anderson factory. <coughs> um, and again, our product is made out of Fibrex, which is not sold in stores. Mm -hmm. So um, we do a custom window, custom sizing, custom grid patterns, and again, on the different types of windows, um, if you'll notice, if you'll go back a couple slides to my uh, summary, um, right there, yeah. if you'll notice on the very bottom, it says exterior sub seal. Mm -hmm. um, that is um, part of the job as well, is because there is rot on those windows and we're gonna replace everything. Um, you know, we're not gonna put a brand new product on something that we can't warranty. So we're gonna take care of the foundation problems as well when we do the <coughs> Do, do if I can ask, the, do you leave the existing frame? Right, it's an insert, so we insert it inside the that. Sir, we're not going to touch yeah. the except the for the sill that you may have to remove. Correct, is the sill the sub sill is the is the part that's rotten. That's what's yeah. sitting on the um, the storm window is sitting on. Yeah, as well as coming into the house on the outside of the current windows. So you're replacing the sub sill, but not the side framing. Correct. Mm -hmm. The um, tell me about this product. It's uh, forty percent wood, sixty percent. Um, are y'all finding that weather's good and it's straight and doesn't warp? Or tell me a little bit about the product. So um, my product doesn't expand and contract, unlike wood and uh, vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, so you're getting a lot more energy efficiency. Also, my warranty alone is better than everybody else on the market. So I have a twenty-year warranty on my product. 10 years on hardware, which is locks. Also, I have a 10 year installation warranty. Mm -hmm. So if something ever happened to where the house expands and contracts and lose a caulking seal, we're under warranty for 10 years to come back and repair that as well. Mm -hmm. Great. And how, how is the color applied on the windows? So is there coating? Um, but my window is paintable, unlike vinyl. Um, it is paintable like wood. Um, there is a coating. Uh, we have a small um, vapor barrier in the on the window itself, but uh, that's in between the raw fibrex and the coating. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's almost not quite like a powder coat, but right. um, a dip coating. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Right. We'll look forward to seeing it. Yes, sir. Uh, hopefully, we'll have to vote. Thank I'd you. I'd like to come over and see it once you put it in. Mm -hmm. Seriously, yeah. always interested in something that's going to be able to be replicated. Uh, Okay. <laughs> we'll call for a bring a, bring some pruning shears when you come, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any any other? No, thank you. Comments. Um, Just add one last thing to this. Uh, um, when you actually do a color coat, you want to make sure that that color coat is in the right area. So say you have two different fabrics, and you coat them, and they all apply to the back. You want to make sure that they're evenly spread. Um, it, 
trying to, to make it right. Yeah. yeah, there's a real need for that. that oh, yes. Because uh, houses, yeah. Exactly. yeah, these things deteriorate over time. But it needs to be a close approximation to what's there now. Sure. Great. Okay, thank you. I'll see if anyone else would like to speak. Um, it's pretty straightforward what you're trying to do, but I think uh, we, we do have that one um, requirement in our historic district and the contributing properties. Would somebody like to make a simple motion? Real. But it's craftsman in, is is the style house, and then farmhouse is what they call their their grid three over one. I believe three over one. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that um, on application C E R H twenty four dash o three five for replacement of four three windows four windows altogether um, that um, we would uh, approve the replacement of the windows with the proposed windows however with the exception that it be changed from a one over one uh, replacement to a farmhouse three over one uh, grid pattern which is um, uh, true divided light with grids on the outside you know, permanently applied on the outside of the window. Mm -hmm. um, and that with that change, that we do find that this is, <laughs> excuse me, in harmony with the uh, neighborhood and is, um, uh, it follows our design review manual on how to replace existing windows and storm uh, sashes on page mm -hmm. 40, uh, 72, excuse me. Mm -hmm. okay. Second. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? No? Okay, all in favor? Raise your right hand. Okay. Approved. Mr. Chairman, I just want to say thank you all for working with us to make your house continue to be mm -hmm. in the style that it is. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, thank you. So we have now one more item. Is that right? Or Item D. Item D under new business, application number CERH24-036 was postponed due to lack of information. Item E under new business, bylaws amendments. Okay. Um, this is a, um, I guess you'd say more of a um, <clears throat> housekeeping kind of item where we make sure that our bylaws uh, refer to the correct building for meetings and uh, there's some other uh, uh, updates here I'm not even sure it requires public comment yeah okay if need be what you're saying yes. okay um, and it's in it was it, it's it's actually just an update of our bylaws that um, you may have received copies of um, more to do with the uh, meeting um, uh, how, parliamentary procedure how to conduct meetings uh, not anything to do necessarily with uh, preservation and uh, we've we've gone through it probably three times over the course of uh, six months now I think probably so um if if someone would like to comment uh, you're welcome to comment on it um it it had 214 park avenue is where the meetings were held and things like that so, um uh, jim holly i think was mainly the author of most of these is that right mm -hmm. okay Yes, sir. Come forward and give your name, please. Again. Hi, uh, 
Uh, Lewis Melvinie, 638 Magnolia Street. And uh, I just want to make a brief comment. Sorry to hold you up on your meeting, but to commend you on updating the bylaws because it's important. Procedure is important, in particular with this board and other boards like the Zoning Board and so on, because then the citizens know or can know exactly what to expect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's really the reason why the communication with us, the public, has improved and uh, the uh, collaboration uh, on mm -hmm. projects. And by the way, you know, uh, when people come up here and something doesn't get approved or it does get approved, uh, it's clear to the entire community because the procedures were clear and were followed. So I think that's this is just something that uh, it's painful to do, I know, and, and you guys are volunteers, so we appreciate that. Uh, but uh, super important because, you know, as, as you know, uh, we're, we're pushing the current administration to get additional members on the board so you have a full board. And one of the obstacles to that is people don't like to come up here and be, uh, you know, criticized for the work they do. And, and I think we want to give them confidence that we love you when you follow procedures. Uh, because it is your discretion to vote on these things. It's not ours. Uh, but, you know, we're really comfortable having you voting on these things when the procedures are clear and we understand where you're coming from and it's clear to the community that way it come you know as as Randy Wilson said in his June of 22 training you know there should be no question when people come up to the meeting it should be relatively crystal clear what's going to happen because if you examine the guidelines and you examine the procedures and they've all been followed the outcome should more or less produce itself mm -hmm. and and uh, anything that you do and this is one of those things to improve that and you know getting the additional time on the submissions and collaborating with Rebecca on comments and preparation of the applications that's just been working very very well and mm -hmm. appreciate that and mr. Reno don't when since you're representing historic Aiken tonight I'll I'll come in historic Aiken in their assistance they've given in reviewing these on sh in a short period of time because i think it's been beneficial i think so uh to get uh somebody a filter at it right before we get it uh we're actually adding a little more time in the next month or so i think we'll have it'll be a 30 day to give everybody right. more that, time to review uh, uh different aspects of the application um, but also it, it allows us to hear some of the community reaction before we get into the meeting. Exactly. So it's, and tonight was a good example. Yep. Exactly. And, and just to, to piggyback <clears throat> a little bit on what you said, we as a board, some of us are going to, Rebecca, what is that that we're going to go to for our CE classes? Yeah, so the state of South Carolina is having their um, preservation conference on April 28th, I believe, um, in Columbia. So we'll be going and attending that. Yeah. So we'll we'll get some practical rather than going through some of the mm -hmm. legalistic side of it. We'll get to look <clears> at some <throat> of the practical applications. Yeah. And, and, uh, I think that's going to be beneficial to all of us too. Yeah, so. One of the things that we've found is there's a lot of resources out there, and there's a lot of people who are willing to help and able to help. And mm -hmm. the Historic Aiken Foundation has some funds that we need to spend to promote preservation in Aiken, and we're happy to collaborate on <coughs> which can be helpful yeah uh, and I think you know working together uh, obviously produces much better result absolutely uh, and you know you see I think the awareness in the city of, of historic preservation is certainly taking it to another level which uh, which is good because we get more public support for the things that we want to do and people understand why we say no and why we say yes especially if it's clear ahead of time right yeah. because then then they feel like it's not a mystery and you know it's not something that yeah. that is you know obscure to them and and and, and in some ways uh, frightening because yeah. you're going into something that you don't know and, and yeah. our mission while we're 
very strongly in favor of preservation is to make it much easier for people to do preservation so that they embrace it, as you said. Yeah, and I, and I think, too, the fact <clears throat> that there's a, a degree of practicality that goes along with it that I think that you have, you know, that we're able to do it like we work with the um, – Downtown, what was, what's the name of the new restaurant that went into? Right. Yeah. yeah. The, so the, we, we took that, you know, that was a good example of, of <clears throat> using some practicality and still keeping the and same. Honestly, it's a, it, I think it's a spectacular result. It really oh, yeah. Is. It and turned giving, out very allowing well. Allowing some flexibility. Yes, so absolutely. You, you don't want to um, punish people for yeah. owning a historic property. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and, and so, you know, I don't, I don't know to what extent you're aware of it, but. You know, Historic Aiken worked with the owners at the mm -hmm. time. They didn't know. Mm -hmm. We provided them with some resources. Uh, we, we, we do have uh, resources um, available that, mm -hmm. you know, expert resources that they can talk to to see. Mm -hmm. And actually, the result the expert gave them was slightly different from ours because they knew <laughs> a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, they had more, more options, and the one they chose is, is – actually the best one in in our view but they had other options uh, to do it and and uh, you know the experts were, were, were very clear on mm -hmm. what they could do and you know some of the other um, forces that were there I think you know one of the things that we can work on going forward is um, identifying and making a list of products and craftsmen who can, especially with windows and exactly. wrought iron and things like that, uh, you know, I, we, we had that fence issue where we had wrought iron and you know, having people who can work with those kinds of products and materials and make, uh, make a good repair or replacement alternative, you know, you hate to tell somebody you've got to come up with a historic window and then leave it to them to find somebody to do it because you know, if, yeah. if if we can find who they are, that, that's super helpful. Yeah, you know, having a repository of information and, and resources is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and I like what you just mm -hmm. said because it's it's nice for, for us to be able to tell them what to do, but we're glad to tell them how they can get it done too. So, right. appreciate that. Occurs to me that uh, Mr. I, I, I've forgotten. The, the iron work, uh, he was in public safety. And yeah. A horse, part of the horse, wasn't, wasn't he part of the uh, mounted, mounted police? No? No, I, I, I might be overlapping too. No, I don't think so. I, yeah. yeah. There was another one that was, but I think he passed away a couple of years. Maybe so, yeah. Tonight, <laughs> Donald Butler. Yes. Oh, wow. He's got a young memory. I thought I thought so. Yeah, yeah. Now he he should he people like him should should be uh, taking someone under their wing and training. So if he gets older and he can't do it anymore, there's another person that can do that. Well, they do that in Charleston. Yeah, yeah, and 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 so and again, your resources like Charleston and Columbia, they may see these cases more often than we do. Because there's not that many wrought iron. Yeah, no. Yeah. But we we have people who can run into them, so so <laughs> that you could we, generate well, more. Well supplied on that. That's right. <coughs> there's actually a wall. I'm not getting off off track here, but there is a wall, the the Ron Pot. Well, somebody does need to run into, I guess, going, around the side. going down the yeah. side. It it looks like it's just getting ready. She must have some supports on the back of it. Yes, yeah, even got some. It's even got some fracture lines in it too. I mean, it's yeah, it's leaning fifteen percent at least. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, for some that, reason, they don't so hit that. that. They want to hit the Ron Pont. Again, you know, it's an interesting issue because it's going to come to you and us soon because. <clears throat> The assessment of that is it's the city's drainage for Whiskey Road that is undermining the foundations for that wall and causing that tilt. And they've asked the city to hmm. uh, get into at least a discussion about who should pay for it, and the city hasn't responded. So 
unfortunately, you know, as time goes on, and that tilt, if if that tilt increases, it's right. It's hard to. It's like the leaning tower. It's yeah. going to be hard. It's hard to bring it back without knocking down first. Yeah. Now all that water goes down into the uh, the uh, uh, tennis court building right. area, and then down into the woods. So uh, that's that would be a way to capture some of the water uh, before it gets into the woods, possibly on Mr. Brody's mm -hmm. property. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. And I think we, we have a motion. Did we? We, we, we have a vote on this. All in. Make a motion. Who's going to make? You're making a motion. Yeah, make a motion that we approve the uh, bylaw changes as presented. I second it. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor of approving the new bylaws? Raise your right hand. Okay. Thank you. And then we can have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>